welcome to Interface Gambia. I'm your presenter, I'm in Jame, with my special show called The Jollof Show. We're in the Gambia to promote tourism into the highest degree we can with this special trip called Mind the Gap Destination Hashtag The Gambia. I mean, one of the busiest and the most important offices in the Gambia and one of the biggest sponsors as well of this trip, which is the GCCI, Gambia Team of Commerce and Industry. I'm happy to have with me the CEO, Mr. Aliu Seka. Mr. Seka, without any doubt, the Gambians living in the diaspora will know that business Gambia is ready for business. Welcome to Interface Gambia TV. How are you, sir? Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to have you in the Gambia, and particularly at Kirjula. We're pleased to have you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Seka. Mr. Seka, first, what are the business analysis since the change of government into this new Gambia we are today? Well, firstly, um, I think um, the freedom that we enjoy today um, has been unparalleled compared to what we've had over the last 22 years. Um, and I think um, to complement that is also the fact that today the playing field is a lot more leveled. Um, businesses can compete more freely. Um, investors can come in and feel that there are no impediments. And certainly that the environment is a lot more conducive to businesses. Of course, there are many other factors that contribute towards that as well. Today we have better discipline in our government. We have less wastage. Our interest rates have come down. The bank lending rates are coming down. Treasury bill rates are coming down. So there is optimism. There is still a lot of work to be done, but there is some optimism. When you say there is a lot of work to be done, meaning? Well, we need to consolidate on some of these gains so far. Um, after a long time, um, of dictatorship, it takes a while to overcome some of the um, so many uh, constraints that we have had to deal with um, for so long. Um, but the good thing, like I said, is that we've started, so the journey has just begun. Now, to, if someone was to ask you today, um, for the interests of the Gambians and those bronze and older nationals that are interested to come and open businesses in the Gambia, will you say now Gambia is safe and ready to in, for, for businesses to come and start here? Oh, definitely. Um, today we have freedom to operate um, your business, um, freedom of speech, and certainly, like I said, even the macroeconomic um, factors have changed, including interest rates, um, particularly um, the discount rates um, by the banks, bringing down the commercial lending rates. But also, um, I think there have been opportunities that have opened up with um, the new dispensation. Okay. Um, in terms of taxes for local businesses, is the bank supporting, and what startup will you say is there for indigenous Gambians and older nationalists that want to come and start business in the Gambia? Well, um, with regards to interest rates um, by the commercial banks, um, over the first long, um, it had depended and will continue to depend on the discount rates by the central bank. And what is the discount rate? Do you know it of head? Well, now it's um, in single digits, um, anything between um, 8 and 10%. But um, you may recall that uh, until maybe two, three years ago, it was more 19 to 20%. So it's now halved. Uh, we think uh, we can still do better. Um, so that now translates to commercial banks running rates as well. Because often they will have to um, add a margin for their own operations and overheads. Right. Um, in regards to operation, does one need a local partner to open a business in the Gambia. The reason I'm asking this question is, in most countries, a local partner will own 51% of the business, in whereby some other countries is hardly the other partner will have anything to gain from that business. Um, no, the Gambian um, business environment is different. Um, a foreigner can come and invest and own 100%. Um, similarly, um, indigenous as well as diasporans as well. So we have a free, um, much a freer um, society here where there are no restrictions on equity. So if a foreigner was to come and open a business today with a Gambian, how many percent will that person own into that business? Like I've clearly mentioned, 51% with most countries that people will own, local will own 51%. So where does a foreigner stand when he wants to open a business in the Gambia and how many percentage will the person own in their business? Well, in the Gambia, like I said, we have a free economy and we live in it more and more today. So there are no restrictions as to equity um, participation. A foreigner, likewise a local Gambian or a diasporan can own 100% to any percentage. Um, of course, we encourage um, foreign investors to partner with local and indigenous Gambians 
so that they can partake in the success and operations of the business. After all, their local content and knowledge will help the indigenous or the, both the indigenous as well as the foreign investor. What message would you have for potential investors? I know I've just asked you, but it's something that's different. The message would you have for the potential in, uh, investors coming to the Gambia to invest in the Gambia? What percentage of Gambian nationals should they employ when they have a business in the Gambia? Well, um, you know, we welcome investment opportunities from all corners of the world. We also recognize that foreign investors bring in both um, their funding as well as their expertise um, to invest in the Gambia. So naturally, they will need some return on investment and profit on their investment. However, I also believe, and we believe at the Chamber very strongly, that um, local content participation in our business um, is also key to success in both business as well as national development. So we continue to encourage all investors, where possible, to partner with local operators so that they can piggyback on each other's um, strengths, but at the same time, make sure that um, actually there is continuity. After all, um, whoever brings the money is also entitled to some return and perhaps um, more um, say in the way the business is run or perhaps even the return on the investment. The reason I'm asking that is because we know that in so, and we've seen it in so many countries whereby we've seen investors, we don't need to name names now, but we've seen investors will go to a particular country to invest there, but then they will take their expertise, whereby in the same field you have the nationals of that country who are same qualified as those expertise coming there. Do we have such a problem in the Gambia? Um, there are isolated cases, but uh, we again, I insist that we have a free economy. But the benefits of hiring and working with local expertise far outweigh bringing in expatriates. After all, you have to pay an, an expatriate tax of $40,000 when you hire more experts. Looking at their investment, they're coming here, 40000 is not that much, $40,000. Would you say is that much? Well, it's not much um, compared to perhaps um, the total investment. But what you recall is that this is paid annually to start with. So every year you'll have to pay expatriate tax of a thousand, well, used to be about a thousand dollars, but um, now it's forty thousand um, dollars. But that's the, that's just to start with. Um, the more a person earns, the more tax they will also pay to the um, Gambia Revenue Authority in income tax. You'll also have to remember that um, you'll have to hire a house or rent a house um, for the expatriate. Secondly, um, the more he earns, the more he can spend in the economy. So um, putting everything together, I think there are benefits of hiring local persons. Because after all, there's also um, one, they will spend, we believe, most of their income in the Gambia. But secondly, um, we think it's important to grow and develop our own natural and human resources. Of late, Gambians in the diaspora, especially the country I just came from, which is the UK, it's hard for us to see Gambian products in the markets there. You hardly go to these big markets or local markets to see Gambian products. What is your department doing so we can be showcasing our stuffs or seeing our products in these countries? Well, uh, we've taken a number of initiatives, both um, at the chamber level as well as with government. Um, during the last trade fair and going forward, we've decided now we will have a Made in Gambia pavilion just to promote exclusively Made in Gambia products. That's number one. Secondly, we continue to train and mobilize the local entrepreneurs to improve on their standards, their packaging, and their processing so that they can compete with anyone across the world. But thirdly, I think, which is most important, um, is to ensure that we open up these markets, provide opportunities for these young entrepreneurs and some of them experienced entrepreneurs to be able to access these markets. Uh, Mr. CEO, I would like to bring your attention to two things. You talk about entrepreneurship. You talk about exporters. I've done a research on recently products coming from the Gambia exported to a neighboring country and then they end up being in Europe where they get sold in higher prices. Are Gambian benefiting directly or indirectly into these businesses? Oh, they are benefiting directly. The bigger the market, um, the more the volume of sales. So whether it's directly from these entrepreneurs or through using the middle or um, any other medium, um, eventually the, um, should we say, the consumer 
uh, will pass on his um, price as well as his sales um, to the, um, should we say, to the producer. Um, having said that, we would rather that the local entrepreneur access those markets directly because then the margin will be a lot bigger on that sale. And what exactly are you doing for the governments to take ownership of these businesses? Because I rather, or we both rather, have governments taking ownership of these businesses rather than taking it outside the Gambia and then getting sell back. And actually, we even found out that most of these products are coming back into the Gambia to be sold to the Gambian people. Is that true? Oh, that's possible. It's a free world. Um, at the end of the day, like I said, we need to be competitive, make sure that we have um, as world-class standards to be able to compete with anyone in the world. Now, at the end of the day, uh, it's the consumer that will determine the success or otherwise of an entrepreneur. But it's equally important that the entrepreneur um, produces at the highest standard, packages his product so that it can compete on any supermarket shelf, and likewise, make sure that it has the market access that it requires. I think overall, uh, we're making progress um, because um, I repeat, we have made in Gambia Pavilion now at the um, International Trade Fair. We continue to take our entrepreneurs to events and trade fairs worldwide so that they can showcase and partner with potential um, people that they can work with, as well as learn best practices from some of these competition. Yesterday I had a visit to Tanje around the fish area, fishing area. We've seen that there's a lot that can be done to export the fish away from the Gambia to Europe and make huge amount of money business for the Gambia and also to employ people that will work there as Gambians. What is your office doing in regards to the business in Tanje? Well, the fishery sector is a very important one in the Gambian economy. Um, there is considerable export actually um, to Europe um, particularly, as well as to other um, countries. Um, however, the biggest challenge we've had to deal with is um, ice processing and packaging of these um, fish. Um, I'm pleased to say that the Ministry of um, Fisheries is now working on a project um, to develop both ice processing plants to ensure that these, um, should we say, these catch uh, um, processed properly to be able to um, export. Now, uh, one of the um, other issues um, has to do with um, perhaps lack of um, development of the infrastructure, particularly lack of um, the fishing vessels. These are mainly owned by foreigners. Um, there is also often allegation that um, there is pirate fishing. Um, a lot of these um, industrial vessels come anchor um, pretty into the um, sea and are able to catch um, fish from our, um, from our seas and export. Um, I think we will have to continue to deal with that, and that particularly will have to be dealt with by the, perhaps the Navy and security forces to ensure that illegal um, fishing does not take place. Um, the second part is to also develop our infrastructure so that we're able to process the catch um, to a standard that's acceptable um, to worldwide competition. Um, then thirdly is also to ensure that the freight and export to these markets are available immediately to ensure that the, um, the produce are also fresh. However, uh, we are working with um, all stakeholders and there are several youth projects now to also promote youth to join um, these fishing um, activities because uh, we also are aware that many of the fisher folk are Senegalese or other nationals. So we would like to promote this so that more Gambians get into the business. Talking about most of the fishermen are Senegalese or other nationalists, I spoke to a few of them yesterday, which is you're quite right. Pretty much, if I was to say out of percentage, 70% of them are Senegalese. So is there anything that you are doing with Mind the Gap. The face of Gambia Worldwide is coming to promote Destination Gambia with a difference to the world through Interface Gambia TV 2018. Gambia Tour from November 30th to 9th December with your presenter, Mr. Lam Jame, the Jollof Show. Gambia Shako Shakanamrek. This tour is sponsored by Gambia Chamber of Commerce Industry, Gambia Tourism Board, Senegambia Beach Hotel, Gambia Hotel Association, Mr. Yang's Dabor, Mr. Jamil Tarawale, LLB, Honor 
Honorable Solicitor, Northern Garden Security Limited, Yaye Instant Money Transfer Services Limited, and TJ Fit and Healthy International. With us, the Gambia Shakau Shakana Mrek. Boki Senegal Boki Europe li dene khatina wai yonne lu tolok 1000 livres fi ci Senegal te dossier fay dara say wa keur wala say xarit meun nañu récupérer xaliss bi ci bep point wari installer sa application tap tap sen ci sa play store wala sa app store worna gawna te yomb la jeufandiko gawal gaw installer te utiliser sa application tap tap sen say yonne bu ñeuk gagner lu tolok 5 livres ak code bi di jolof tap tap sen application bi ñepp tam Welcome to the exquisite luxurious Haven residence. This beautiful residential gives you all the serenity that you would ask for and it's also private. We have furnished luxurious units which has all the functionalities that you would expect from your home. Our unfurnished unit you can utilize and furnish at your taste for those who will come and become a resident. The kitchen is fitted including a laundry machine to do your personal washing. We have flexible options of long and short term stay with complimentary internet access for our short term guests. Availability of a standby generator for constant electricity flow. 24 hour security service ranging from CCTV surrounding the property. From the rooftop you can lounge, enjoy the tranquility and the environment, you can see the ocean. Come join us at the Haven Residence, a place of serenity, tranquility, a place that you can call home away from home. Brought to you by Uniglo Properties. Welcome back to Interface Gambia. I'm your presenter, Lamin Jami, with my show, The Jell of Show. We're here in the offices of GCCI. It's a pleasure here to be here talking to Mr. Alusek. You are doing within your power and your capability within your department to sensitize Gambian youths to get out there and to do something and work hard so we can get this country running back. Because knowing the fact that this country one day will belong to the youths of this country, is there anything that you are doing? Oh, we're doing loads um, together with many stakeholders. We work actively uh, with several projects, including the Youth Empowerment Project, YEP. Um, but we also have our own incubation um, project, uh, which has an agro-processing, um, should we say, unit. Um, but we also actively and regularly um, have fora and um, various activities that we organize to get the youth entrepreneurs like you said, 60% of our population is youthful. So there's a huge human resource there. Um, but at the same time, we need to deal with the fact that access to capital is still a major hindrance. Secondly, um, the level of education and perhaps especially on vocational education has been talked about and developed more and more. Um, then of course, we need to also ensure that um, we change the mindset. Rather than employment, we should look at more and more of um, entrepreneurs being created and job entrepreneurship rather than just seeking jobs. Of late, most Gambians living in the diaspora have started to adventure in an individual container business. There's a wall of, there's a wall of saying that says, um, what resources are here in your department to try and sensitize and help these people to come up and rejoin each other to make a better business plan for themselves? Well, we, uh, we welcome uh, many more Gambians coming in in the new dispensation because many left um, for obvious reasons in the past. Uh, the circumstances have changed now, so today um, everybody feels more at home. Uh, we also are aware that most of the businesses in the Gambia are in the services sector uh, or are either in trading or, in fact, um, the bulk of them are in trading. Um, I think uh, what we need to do is um, certainly whilst we encourage and continue to trade, 
we should start looking at also small enterprises which are industry focused, um, transformation of um, some of these goods and services, what is called value addition. And we can look at particularly, uh, we talked about um, the fisheries sector, but we can also look at the agribusiness. We have a lot of produce that are um, harvested every year, whether it's fruits or vegetables. These need to be processed and packaged so that we can have better value. So that's what we encourage a lot more people also to consider going into. Your department being the best department, I will say, in the Gambia when it comes to businesses. The reason I'm saying this, I want to know what exactly would you do to help as you've been the experts on the area that young youths can start adventuring to start up a business? Well, the opportunities are tremendous. Um, I believe um, the, one of the most promising is agribusiness. Uh, whether it's the melon juice that can be processed properly on the hygienic conditions and packaged is one. Whether it's the orange juice, another one. Whether it's mango juice is another. Whether it's the actual fresh fruits that can be processed and packaged so that we actually buy more and more local produce, which is also healthier and fresher. I think there are huge opportunities there. Talk about the fisheries. I mean, why don't we have more and more youth going into the fisheries sector? Um, go out, fish, and then bring it out to the shores so that they can sell to our families to buy more and more at cheaper and more competitive prices. After all, the bigger the catch and the bigger the produce, the more competitive it will be also um, for people to buy these. So um, these are all opportunities. We also um, have noted that fashion is a growing business especially for many young Gambians that venture into business. And whether it's um, in clothing or whether it's in accessories and new wares, um, that's continually growing. But, um, you know, the opportunities for the youth and everyone really are cross-cutting. Wherever there is a need, there is also an opportunity for business. Mr. Seka, just going forward, when it comes to businesses, Gambians are striving so hard, trying to get themselves to into, into the business platform. What exactly is your office is doing to help these people to start up a set up a business in the Gambia? Oh, uh, we strive and work every day. Um, I share with my team that we wake up every morning and come to the Kirjula, uh, which is the house of business, um, which is our head office, um, only to serve um, the business community. Um, we do a lot of things, particularly representation. We sit on a number of boards uh, where we represent the private sector interest and articulate daily, day in, day out, the interests of the private sector. But we also use certain platforms. We every year hold an annual trade fair, uh, which has become one of the biggest events in the Gambia in terms of business um, promotion. Um, the next one has been slated for April next year, 2019. So we hope we can welcome um, your TV. Program. Interface Gambia TV show. We'd we'll love to be here to cover that. Okay. We very much welcome um, that opportunity. But also, um, we, it's the Gambia Chamber of Commerce that actually issues certificates of origin for all exports from the Gambia. So again, this um, acts to promote both uh, made in the Gambia as well as even value addition um, that can be exported outside. And um, thirdly, um, we also um, hold a, an award business dinner every, annu every year um, to celebrate the very best businesses and practices um, so that the others can learn from and network. Um, then most importantly um, is that whenever we um, have um, events, whether it's educational learning, promotions, or networking, we invite the business community to come learn together, network together, and learn best practices as well as match make with foreign investors. Knowing the Gambia beginner is just not living around the greater Banjul area. People live in up country with business ideas and business, possible business opportunities they wanted to start. What exactly help is out there for them to start up their business, even if they're not living in the greater Banjul area? Um, well, the challenge for this year is actually to set up regional presence um, in URR which is the farthest point. And we've made progress in the sense that in the next few days, we will actually have um, a regional presence formally launched in Basset. Um, it's the Gambia Chamber of Commerce, so it is not a Banjil Chamber of Commerce. 
So the work that we do every day, working with the government as well as other stakeholders and business partners, is actually one that cuts across the whole Gambia. When we um, increase the effectiveness, or should we say the competitiveness of the Gambia, everybody in the Gambia benefits, whether you are a member of the Chamber of Commerce or not. Likewise, those that are in Basse or in Banjo. So we continue to do that every day, and that's our mantra. Uh, Mr. Seker, CEO of Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industria, this will bring me to my last question that I will ask you. What advice will you have for diasporans in Gambia living in abroad or all the nationalities that want to come and invest in this new Gambia for business opportunities? Well, you know, um, first of all, Gambia is home for diasporans. Um, so despite greener pastures in the past or continue to be today, it's always nice to look back inwards, and that is the Gambia's home. Um, there are opportunities that I've talked about, whether it's in tourism, in agribusiness, in fisheries, in the health sector, in education. We are doing things better now. We communicate and um, have open fora and platform with the government much better than we've done in the past. Recently, we celebrated the launch uh, of the first business council meeting, the national business council meeting, which comprised um, five ministers and the presidency. In this case, was represented by the vice president, as well as um, eight um, prominent business leaders. So I think um, the atmosphere has changed. It's promising. We need everybody on board. Thank you very much, Mr. Alusek, uh, the CEO of Gambia Team of Commerce and Industry. It was a pleasure to have you on Interface Gambia TV. And of course, on behalf of Interface Gambia TV and my very self, the presenter, Lamin Jame, I would like to thank you and your department for joining this noble cause to invite us to come to the Gambia and Soul Kills destination, Gambia with a different. With your help and your offices and all the sponsors, I will name them again, yourself, I mean, your sponsors being the sponsors are um, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Senegambia Beach Hotel, Gambia Hotel Association, Young's Dabo, Yaya Money Services, Jamil Traveling, Northern Security Services, and TJ Health International. These are the sponsors, but we really, really appreciate your time, Mr. CEO. Thanks ever so much for joining Interface Gambia TV. It is a pleasure to have you on board. Thank you very much, sir. Congratulations. Thank you. Will you invite us next year before I just close down? Inshallah. You're welcome. Thanks ever so much. Jena Kodega Nurmboka, you know, Satan's Interface Gambia TV. Malasan presenter Neka Lenfichi Gambia. Nyolan Purkoval and Destination Mind the Gap with a Different. And on CEO Sun Harit Sun Mak, Mr. Ali Useke, the CEO of Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry. Doing what you refer to you more, Kadu refer to you more. Salam alaikum badding on Telemali Prison Salam in Jame. All the way from the UK, Interface Gambia TV with Nyaso Mind a Jollof Show. Natale Gambia na Purka Gambia promote into the next level. Sponsor Soul, one of the sponsors, not all GBB, well, um, Gambia Team of Commerce and Industry, not a CEO, yeah, Mr. Alu Sekati, Alan Indiamo Kumon Memo Atelier for Jan Indiamo Betol, and a Paratel Purka more sponsor next time again around to come and showcase Gambia in a different level, inshallah, Rabbi Allah Baraka, Jiring and Jeff, stay tuned with Interface Gambia TV, Accent Soul, Jello Show, Gambia Chico, Chicanamre. Thank you. Good. Thank you very much. Come on, let's get together. So Hello again, I'm your presenter Lamin Jami on Interface Gambia TV with my special show here in the Gambia, the Jollof Show, Destination Mind the Gap to promote the Gambia to the best we can. We just finished our interviews in these offices here with the CEO of Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Mr. Alu Seke. What a great interview. Stay tuned and watch the special interview coming from me, your presenter Lamin Jami, here in the Gambia to promote tourism and to the best we can do it and to the highest level, destination mind the gap with difference. Thanks to all our sponsors to this trip into the Gambia, the Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Senegambia Beach Hotel, Gambia Hotel Association, Mr. Young's Davo, Jamil Trawale, Northern Garden Security, Yaya Money Services, and TJ Health International. With me, Gambia Chico Chikanamrek. A date for your diary. Gambian Fashion and Exhibition Weekend. Designers are welcome to register interest. It's all about raising awareness of the fantastic work being done in our community. Award night. 
Fashion Night and Exhibition of Top Class Only. This event is sponsored by Gam Designers UK. Boki Senegal Boki Europe li dene khatina wai yonne luto lok mil livre fi ci Senegal te dosse fay dara say wa keur wala say xarit man nañu récupérer xaliss bi ci bep point wari installer sa application tap tap sen ci sa play store wala sa app store worna gawna te yomb la jeufandiko gawal gaw installer te utiliser sa application tap tap sen say yonne bu ñeuk gagner luto lok 5 livre ak code bi di jolof tap tap sen application bi ñepp tam There is a land not far away where the sea meets the shore on a golden beach. Where the river flows through the forest in a thousand creeks. A place where people smile and say hello. Welcome to the Gambia, the smiling coast of Africa. Welcome to the exquisite luxurious Haven residence. It's beautiful, residential, gives you all the serenity that you would ask for, and it's also private. We have furnished luxurious units, which has all the functionalities that you would expect from your home. Our unfurnished unit, you can utilize and furnish at your taste for those who will come and become a resident. The kitchen is fitted, including a laundry machine to do your personal washing. We have flexible options of long and short term stay with complimentary internet access for our short term guests. Availability of a standby generator for constant electricity flow. 24 hour security service ranging from CCTV surrounding the property. From the rooftop you can lounge, enjoy the tranquility and the environment, you can see the ocean. Come join us at the Haven Residence, a place of serenity, tranquility, a place that you can call home away from home. Brought to you by Uniglo Properties. Mind the Gap, the face of Gambia worldwide, is coming to promote Destination Gambia with a difference to the world through Interface Gambia TV 2018. Gambia Tour from November 30th to 9th December with your presenter, Mr. Lam Jame, the Jollof Show. Gambia Shako Shakanamrek. This tour is sponsored by Gambia Chamber of Commerce Industry, Gambia Tourism Board, Senegambia Beach Hotel, Gambia Hotel Association, Mr. Yangs Dabor, Mr. Jamil Tarawale, LLB, Honorable Solicitor, Northern Garden Security Limited, Yaya Instant Money Transfer Services Limited, and TJ Fit and Healthy International. With us, the Gambia Shako Shakanamrek. Hey. Hello again, I'm your presenter Lamin Jamil on this special tour in the Gambia called Destination Gambia with all my sponsors in the Gambia Beach Hotel, GCCI, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Jamil Trawale, Youngs Dabo, Yaya Money Services, Northern Garden Security in the UK, and of course TJ Health International. Um, we're back again with this gentleman here. Just yeah. tell us exactly what are we seeing here now. Okay, after feeding them, so I'm going to open the tap so they will all come down and ring. So later some of them will swim, then they open the earrings so that they can dry themselves. You know, they fly high and there is more much cooler than here. So that's why some of them, when they come down after feeding them, so we open the tub, some of them they will swim, then they cool down themselves. Thank you very much. We just leave you to carry on with that. We just come over here because people still want to enjoy this beautiful soul. Let's just leave him, just carry on with that. A love of nature is in the soul of the country. The many forests and parks teem with wildlife. Over 560 species of birds live in and migrate to our land. It's one of the best places in the world to see them. Kilometers up to five kilometers, but tomorrow the same time, the same place, so you see them back here. So we do this every day, 11.30 here in Sene Gambia Beach Hotel. So this is what we do at 11.30, yeah. On the golden sands by the mighty ocean, imagine a private retreat buried deep in the forest. A special place to relax, recharge and get in touch with our culture and nature. Hello, welcome to Interface Gambia. I'm your presenter, Lamin Jami, here in the Gambia, in Senegambia Beach Hotel. On this special and noble tour that we came to the Gambia to come and promote our country, destination, mind the gap with a difference. With the help of our sponsors, our main sponsors being Senegambia and GT Board and Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Jamil Trawale, Yankuba Dabo, Yaye Money Services, Northern Security Guard and TJ Health International. Today I'm here in Senegambia Beach Hotel to talk to the person responsible for this 
beautiful comments that we're hearing from the tourists. He must be doing something right. He must, he must be getting his staffs to serve to the best of their ability. Mr. Bunaman Jai, who's the chairman of the Gambia Hotel Association. Mr. Njai, welcome to Interface Gambia TV. Thank you, Lamen. Thank you and welcome to the Gambia. Welcome to the Senate Gambia Beach Hotel. And um, I'm looking forward to a great interview today. Thank you. Mr. Njai, thank you very much. Um, on behalf of Interface Gambia and my very self, and of course, uh, most of my viewers will agree with me, for you to take this noble honor to give us the opportunity to come to the Gambia and give us this beautiful place to stay as well. I'm also saying thank you very much. But Mr. Njai, if I just could come, how do you see this year's tourist season after the change of government towards this new era of the new Gambia? And thank you, Lamin. Um, this year seems to be very promising. Promising in many fronts. Um, first and foremost, of course, we've had a new change, we've new change of government um, that has brought confidence back to our partners, like the EU, who are our main suppliers of um, tourists. Gambia depends largely on package stores, so most of our clients are coming from the UK. Notwithstanding, we've reformed our, 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 our commitments and our, our membership with the common world, um, with the Arab world, and uh, everybody else that uh, we're doing business with. So that alone is sending great um, signals, and um, being our main partners, they are certainly ready to do business with us again. Um, notwithstanding for that also that um, Gambia is a destination that is cherished by a lot of people. You will understand also that most of the clients that visit the Gambia are repeaters, and uh, meaning a good 35% of them are repeaters. So they actually know what they want. They've been to the destination before. And this is the reason why we're now also uh, taking this opportunity to interact with Interface um, because that you know that Britain is still our major supplier when it comes to package stores, but hardly do you hear about Gambia in Britain. Yes, it's known in areas like Manchester and London and other places, but there is still a far-reaching mission that we need to do. Yeah. So it's important that we're talking to Interface and putting Gambia back on that pedestal where it belongs in the UK. You are very right. Talking about that because, yeah, that's mainly where the Gambians are in the UK. That's where they locate themselves, Manchester, Birmingham, Leeds, and so many areas. But I've also seen that lots of the tourists around here in this beautiful hotel, which is a Gambia Hotel, I spoke to a few of them. They have mentioned to me that not actually from Leeds, or, but from different sides of the UK, and Gambia has been a destination that has been recommended. But going forward, are there, any, are there sufficient beds in the hotels? Um, that when you talk about sufficient beds, yes, there are sufficient beds. What the challenge is is quality beds. Because the demand is quite yes. high now, as we can see. Um, you can see that at currently, as we speak, the demand outseats, uh, uh, supersedes the, the the supply, and um, in this is this is one of the challenges that Gambia is facing as a destination now is that we are short of quality beds. But having said this, um, in the new year. And in the next coming weeks, we have seen, and it's going to happen, that um, uh, 500, over 500 new beds are, have been created and will be open for sale to the public. Um, you've got the Sun Prime Tamala coming up. You've got the African Princess coming up. Mercy has also started. There's the Swiss Boutique Hotel. These are all new innovations that are coming, and these are hotels of very high quality uh, because what they are is that they are four star and above. And I think uh, if you look at the National Development Plan of the Gambia Island, I, and, and the advice from the Minister of Tourism is that f henceforth all the hotels that are going to be built are not going to be under, uh, they will be over four going, going up stars. stars. Yeah. And this is what Gambia is actually yearning for now, is top-notch quality beds. But also to be able to do this, we need to also promote tourism so that as much as investors are investing their money, that it is not just a one-sided show, that 
we are able to do this on a whole year round business for um, investors alike. The other good thing is that um, Gambians are now beginning to get interest in the hotel industry and are investing heavily. These three hotels that I've just mentioned you that they will be opening over 600 beds are on, owned by Gambians. So, so it is quite interesting that now Gambians are taking the helm of tourism into their own hands and driving the force. That is very important. Gambians taking the drive in their own hands to do it because tourism is a sector in this country that both you and I will know and most people that are viewing this program that it contributes a lot to the GDP of this country. Having said that, um, how about the qualities of these hotels that we just mentioned that have been built by the Gambians? They are of very high quality. I mean, if you rank them now, um, they must be the top of the range of the hotels. Like I said, um, they've, they've, they've got completely a new facade uh, from the old traditional hotels that you see around. Um, they're more now open, friendly, greener, um, built around nature, which is quite interesting because and, and most of the designs are that of Africa. Africa. Um, it is quite interesting that um, what used to prevail before was that these were things that were built in European fashion. That trend is face, fading out now. The trend that we are entering into now is everybody wants to depict Africa. Because people are coming from Europe, not to see Europe in Africa, but to see Africa in itself. That's true. So this is the new dimension that is happening at the moment. Yes. Uh, talking about that, um, we visited some other sites that are also within the tourist sector. But one thing for sure that we would like to know, knowing the fact that Gambia has got a lot to offer when it comes to tourism, how competitive are the rates in the Gambia compared to the sub-region? Um, that's a very good question. I will tell you that I have traveled extensively, both in Africa and in Europe. And what we offer in terms of quality, in terms of service, um, they don't commensurate with our rates at all. Our rates are considered to be the cheapest in the sub-region. If you compare going to next door, which is Dakar, yep. uh, you compare um, the hotels, their hotels are all rice hotels, yeah? They, 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 they don't have the space like we have. If you compare Senegambia, Senegambia is about 23, more than 23,000 acres, acres of, 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 of right. land here. Um, if you look at, um, in Senegal, what you have is this high rise buildings. Yeah. And if you go look at the rates that they charge and the rates that we charge, it's about 50%, we are 50% cheaper but that doesn't mean yeah, cheaper than what Senegal uh, um, uh, is asking for. If you compare apples to apples, uh, if you were to compare a three-star property in the Gambia and a three-star property in the Senegal, you will see that the roads the rates are very cheap compared to the rates that you get in Senegal. In most cases, you don't even get breakfast added to your package. In Gambia, fortunately, all the hotels that operate and sell a package is inclusive of breakfast. The service is next to none. If you look at the service level in the Gambia and the service level in Senegal, I am definite and I am confident to say that the service level here is definitely higher than that of Senegal. But we happen to be on the lower end. And this is one thing that we are advocating at the level of the GHA also, so that when these classifications are being done, that people take up, we are looking at, augmenting our prices so that three hotel star do receive the three hotel star prices, mm -hmm. four hotel four star hotels do receive four hotel stars prices. Mm -hmm. It's b been a very long time that we are underpaid and this is something that within the next tourist season that we need to bring this on board and take the prices that it's worldwide. Yeah. This is very interesting. You talk about the services as well. The services for Gambians and of course tourists that are coming to the Gambia is great. But one thing for sure, I was really touched about the staffing level in here, how happy they are. But how is that possible? How are your staff so happy to serve this beautiful hotel in Gambia? What is happening behind the scenes that people want to know? Quite interesting um, question, I mean, again. Um, you know, you could as well have beautiful structures. But if you don't have the staff to complement those structures, you know where. That's true. Um, we have over 300 staff in this hotel. 
And um, when I took over this hotel in 2010, obviously um, we had some problems between, when I came in, there were problems between the staff, management, and owners. There was some kind of uh, distrust atmosphere. Okay. And in my strategic plan, this was the first thing that I had to take care of. I'm somebody who is very passionate with my staffs. Um, I know them by name, I visit their houses, um, we give them training, we create an environment where you know you wake up in the morning and you want to come to work. You are ready to come to work and you are ready to give out what you have. Um, we have yearly trainings and um, for the last 10 years since I've been here, every year we organize training for our staff. It is important to keep on training your staff because we live in a very competitive world. And uh, that um, service level is very paramount and people paying their money expect a level of service. They don't expect nothing less than that. Um, Senegambia, if you look at it, it's the largest hotel in terms of capacity in the Gambia. But we try to also reach out to our clients you know, we have monthly meetings with our staff, we have weekly meetings amongst the management level, um, we, 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 we do um, communication through the heads of the departments, and um, we take our staff seriously also in the sense that uh, we give them, there's a minimum wage in Senegambia Beach Hotel, and you know, the, 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 the sky is the limit of what the staff can earn he in here. Um, we are prided to be the lesser star, uh, the, the, the hotel with less expatriates given the size of this hotel here. Um, it's headed by a Gambian, of course, me. We still deliver the service on the top of the range. We still deliver the service on the top of the range. We are a triple star, but I can tell you that we are delivering a five star um, service. That has been confirmed by some of your guests that I spoke to earlier on since I arrived in the Gambia. Uh, most of them talked about the, the service here. Hopefully when you watch this interview sometime um, during the course of the week or next week, you will see what they've said about your, the comments that people have said. Also, is the hotel industry still at the forefront of creating jobs for Gambian youths? Um, do you will understand that um, 30,000 people are employed directly with the hotel industry? and another 40,000 indirectly with the, with the tourism sector. So it's an uh, uh, um, employee creator for the Gambia and the government as well. Uh, it contributes about 18% of the GDP of this country. Um, we can create more jobs if we have a seasonal, uh, a whole year business, we can create more jobs. You will understand also that um, when the green season is here, that half of the hotels are shut down. So which means half of the hotels are sending their employees home. So what we need from government is to give the tourism industry incentives that can keep these hotels doors open all year round so that we don't, at the end of the uh, winter season, have to send staff home. We can keep them employed. Give incentives to the airline that come into the country so that we are competitive also to the sub-region. I mean, if you look at Gambia, we are the most expensive when it comes to the Jet 1A uh, fuel aviation. These are things that government needs to look at and give back to the tourism industry uh, in terms of the GDP, the, 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 the percentage of GDP that we are contributing to this country. Tourism, it's a job creation uh, uh, um, offer. It creates the much needed foreign currency that the traders are trading in between. So government should give it its due priority for it to grow. Yes. Yep. Yes. Um, we yearn for half a million tourists in 2020. Oh, yes. It's 2018 now, which is nearly coming to an end. We are going into 2020. We have not even reached half of that figure that yet, yet, that target yes. yet. Right. So government needs to do more so that actually we, um, we, we meet those targets before 2020 or at least to go into the National Development Plan uh, agenda that we meet the, the demand in, 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 in hotel beds, we meet also the demand in government's expectations when it comes to creating jobs for youths and Gambians 
um, in the, 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 the expectations from government also to increase on the foreign exchange earning, the demand also in government for creating um, uh, numbers, to be able to create the numbers, to reach those numbers that we yearn for within the National Development Plan um, year. Uh, interesting. So government has to play a very important role when it comes to helping um, the gentleman here, Mr. Njai, who knows a lot of what he's um, doing here since 2010. Someone takes out such a responsibility and pretty much, I mean, so far, um, what a beautiful interview. But we'll take a short break and then we'll still come back to you. I'm your presenter, Lime Njai, with Interface Gambia TV on the special show in the Gambia called Destination Mind the Gap with the difference. Of course, with the help of himself and the hotels and all the sponsors that has took the initiative to help us, um, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Senegambi Beach Hotel, Gambia Hotel Association, Northern Garden Security, Yaya Money Services, TJ Health International, Jamil Trawale, and Young Stabo. Stay tuned. We'll be back with you with the interview still. Where high-class standards are complemented with simple pleasures in a natural paradise. The drums tell of great adventures waiting for you. If it's excitement you're looking for, we have something for everyone. Skydiving from 10,000 feet up may not suit everybody, but for the thrill seeker, there's no better way to see the smiling coast. At night, it's time to hit Gambia's famous strip. There's a wide range of bars and restaurants. Then it's on to one of the many clubs to dance the night away. This one for a blessed Gambia. The more we work together, the more we celebrate, the more we come together, the more we celebrate. Come on, let's get together. There's a place I love to be. The Gambia, the Gambia. With your presenter, Mr. Lam Jamme, the Jolo Show. Hey, yo, 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 you already know me, man. FATA slash El Presidente. Man, the job of the Inshallah, Wednesday. Ben TV Lalo, okay? The channel 175, 10.30 p.m. You know, for next Max, my brother. Hey. You know, come in and go ahead, guy. It's gonna be live happening here on Interface Gambia TV. I'm your presenter, Lamin Jami, on a special show called the Jello Show. Watch out for this man here, El Presidente. Next week, Wednesday, 175 on the Sky Channel Box. Don't miss it. It's a crazy one. Yo. Miss, how are you? Yo. Day met today. No, Hana Dega today. Dega di. Dega ni aku dega tanan ni. Aku agi tu. Chum. Ah man. But you know. Dylan was here to meet Dylan Sweaty Happy New Year as well. I feel you now. Me you are the Inshallah, con you know. Get ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. A very special Happy New Year from myself and of course El Presidente and the whole of the Interface Gambi team. And of course the job show with my manager. I know he's out there watching me, Mr. Mosa and Gary. We salute you, sir. A very special Happy New Year. Bon Ani Dylan Yano Jamu Yen Yepo Handi Nisset and Fisi Interface Gambi TV. Jako Tay. 19. Yo. Fograi Ju. Coach. No, coach not. For La Force Day. Send call on you, dog. And yeah, you know we got the best rhythm. We got that feeling in your chest rhythm. Hey rhythm, dolly music, the good money rhythm. And yeah, you know we got the best rhythm. We got that feeling in your chest rhythm. A date for your diary, Gambian Fashion and Exhibition Weekend. Designers are welcome to register interest. It's all about raising awareness of the fantastic work being done in our community. Award night, fashion night and exhibition of top class only. This event is sponsored by Gam Designers UK. 
Boki Senegal Boki Europe leader ne khatina way yone luto lok mil ne vrufi ti Senegal ti dosi fe dara sayi wa kero wala sayi karit man na nyore ki pere khalis bisi be po poe wari estale sa aplikasyon tap tap sen ti sa ples to wala sa el pues to wurna gauna te yon bela jefan di ko gawal gaw estale te utilize sa aplikasyon tap tap sen sayi yon ne bunje ke ganya luto lok sayi ke lever akkod bi di jolof tap tap sen aplikasyon bi nyep tam. Welcome back to Interface Gambia. I'm your presenter, I'm in Germany on this special show that we have in the Gambia called Destination Mind the Gap with the Difference. I'm sitting next to me here is the gentleman, Mr. Njai, Mr. Bunamanjai. Bunamanjai, of course, everyone knows him in the Gambia, but people living in the diaspora need to know this man because the knowledge this man has got when it comes to the hotel industry. Now that he's the chairman, mashallah, Mr. Njai, welcome back to Interface Gambia. In collaboration with the Tourism Board, the central government provides quality service training for the Gambians. Is the Gambia Hotel Association still providing training for the Gambian youth to meet the demands of the tourist sector? Um, this is one of the association's primary targets, the Gambia Hotel Association. Having said that, being the chairman of the Gambia Hotel Association, I am also the chairman of the training committee of the Gambia Hotel Association. And to this effect, the Gambia Hotel Association has a five-year training plan for its members, because this is one of what the members benefit from. And this year alone, we've already had a training with um, PUM from the Netherlands, who are our partners. And we also had a training with um, Inside Training, who are also hailing from the Netherlands. And with inside training, the, fo if we, with the first phase of the um, training has started with inside training, where across the board we've trained 200 Gambians two already. Gambians yes, already. in yes, um, it was a two-week um, training program in collaboration with GTHI, and uh, it was held at the premises of the GTHI. We've been able to train 200 hotel staff, and the training is, in, is ongoing. We also have a five-year training plan with PUM. PUM are a group of experts that have retired from various works of life, including the tourism sector, of course, and they do, on a yearly basis, send us trainers to come and train the hotel staff. Notwithstanding, I think by next week, we are going to have this health and hygiene training for all the hotel staff as well. So training is core and is at the top of our agenda. It is only through training that you can maintain and improve on the already existing services that we provide. And we want Gambia to be known for that. So yes, training is at the key and, uh, 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 of our agenda. Well, to deliver a good service, of course, training is on your key agenda, like you clearly said. Is the hotel association behind the allegation of no zone area for Gambian use? And if so, why? If you talk about the backway syndrome, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I guess here you are referring to um, the beaches and the tourism development area. That's right, yes. I think this is a big misconception because as far as I understand and I operate within the tourism industry, um, yes, there are restrictions in some key areas. Um, if you look at the Senegambia Strip, for example, um, there are checkpoints, which is normal in any of the um, clusters of um, hotels. This is purely on security aspects, yeah. nothing to do with discrimination of Gambians coming into the TDA. Everybody is allowed to come into the TDA, but you may at some point in time be taking aside for interrogation or just to clear yourself for what are you doing because um, here again we've got people that are idle that have got nothing to do in the hotel industry no business meaning they don't have work they are not patronizing the restaurants or the related services but they're just hustling people on the road chanting them trying to get something out of them now um, we're not saying this is not bad what is bad in this is that you cannot always take, take, take. You need to also give. So 
there is the good bumser, there's the bad bumser. I'm going to be talking to you because that relates to my next question. Are there issues of these bumsters still within the hotel industry? I, 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 would, I would just like to wrap up the earlier question. I mean, if you go to the beaches, yes. these are not private beaches, they're public beaches. That's right. So everybody's allowed to be on the beach. And if you go there, people that are business on the beach, are they doing their businesses. People that want to enjoy the beaches are there enjoying the beaches. But what we don't want to see is the, you know, constant hustling of some of these people and tourists whilst they are lying on their sunbed, enjoying the sun, you know, sunbathing. Uh, people are chanting them. You don't dare to go outside your hotel because people are after you, asking you for money all the time. You know, that's not the kind of Gambia that we want to depict. Absolutely. And I will clearly say this again, there is no zone in the Gambia. This does not exist. Wow. So that's been said by the chairman himself, the man responsible. The chairman says there is no go zone area at all in the Gambia when it comes to the hotel industry. Um, but is there issues with the bumsters? Are you have, do your security men have issues with the bumsters? Um, the bumsters are all over. Okay. Um... I must admit that it's become worse than it used to be before. Why is that? Um, why is that is simple, because it's a new democracy and people think that they can go anywhere, be anywhere, do anywhere that they like. Um, like I said earlier on, there is the good bumpsters that can actually sell you products or take you to places that it's outside within outside the tourism industry mm -hmm. and get to see real Gambia, experience a real Gambia. Those are the good bumpsters. Those are the good, you don't call them bumpsters, those are the good ambassadors the of the tourism, yes, the of the tourism industry. Road, Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have the organized tourist guides here mm -hmm. that take people on tours on a daily basis. What we want to associate as bumpsters is the people that don't have any business in the tourism industry but to create hustling to, 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 to try to get as much illegal money from tourists as possible. They, they, they are in the corners, they sell drugs, they sell everything. Those are the kind of people that we don't do not want in the tourism in, uh, area because they create a wrong impression of the Gambia. That's true. Uh, remember to market a destination is an expensive venture. Indeed. And we don't just have to market the Gambia just for a few loose cannons mm -hmm. to give us a bad image. Okay? Gambia is already perceived by some as a sex destination, tourism des sex destination, yeah. which is not what we are, no. which is not what we want to depict. What we want tourists to enjoy is to come and enjoy the sunshine, the beautiful um, hotels that we have, the culture and the cuisine of the Gambia and meet the real people. It said that if you want to see the animals, you have to go to the east of Africa. If you want to see the genuine people, you have to come to the west of Africa. And Gambia is no exception. And this is why we are referred to as the smiling coast of Africa. That's very right. If you want to see the most happy people, you need to go to the west of Africa. And without doubt, Gambia is one of the most beautiful countries someone can go and visit. Of course, the reason why we call the smiling coast of Africa. But going forward, uh, Mr. Njai, <coughs> sorry again. Is the hotel industry considering rates to local people, I mean, in Gambians, if they want to come and chill? Because it's not only for tourists, because Gambian people also can use these facilities and enjoy a quality time with their families. Are the rates being considered when it comes to the locals? Okay. This is what we call domestic tourism. Thank you. And this is, of course, encouraging Gambians to come and patronize the hotel industry either by way of coming in and having a drink, having a meal, or spending a weekend with your families. Um, I must admit that we've tried our hands at this, but it has not succeeded yet. Why is there? What's now, the reason? Now, there is a psychology to this, and this is why I'll come to my recommendation of, of what needs to be done so that Gambians can patronize Gambians themselves when it comes to the tourism products. Um, if you look at it, um, most of the people that can afford to go into hotels really 
um, people that middle and up class um, people. And most of them are living comfortably in their homes. And um, for me, what it means to go and stay outside and to chill out, it will mean to travel outside my domicile. Meaning you need to go beyond mm. Birkama, beyond Serakunda, to be able to have a change of environment. Mm. Most people would not believe that leaving their homes and driving five minutes to the next available hotel is a good way of spending a weekend. This is why now we need to provo we need to uh, 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 promote more upcountry facilities. You are a Gambian, right. and I'm sure if I asked you, there are a lot of places in the Gambia that you haven't been before. Including the one that I've been yesterday, Juvura. Never been there. What we need to promote is upcountry facilities so that people can take the normal one hour, two hour drive to go outside the combos and to enjoy what the hinterland has to offer. And um, you certainly have people, uh, places like um, Sindola, you've got places like Tendaba, you've got places like Jufure, uh, sorry, um, um, Janjambure, Makati. Why aren't Gambians exploring these possibilities? To also not only take their, their loved ones, but to also take their children and expose them to the culture, to the hinterland. I mean, I'm sure you've been to Jufure yesterday. You've seen the difference between the way people live. And these are the genuine Gambians. These are the genuine people. If you look at the, look at the way they live, right, and how happy they are, you wouldn't believe that, yes, happiness is not only based on what one can afford. Happiness is your surrounding, your friends, your environment. That is what happiness is all about. That is very true, Mr. Njai. You talked about the hinterland, which is very important. What is your department under your own capability doing for the hinterland to benefit when it comes to the tourist sector? Um, in collaboration with the National Development Plan, this is also part of what is um, on government's uh, table. Um, they've created um, areas uh, upcountry and are encouraging investors to come and invest in our country so that we create this la this um, um, comfortable accommodation up country so that when people go not only the tourists but i'm talking about gambians i i i know for a fact that excuse me i know for a fact that when there are these government functions be it a political rally be it a government function or whatever it is one of the challenges, or even when the president goes on a nationwide tour, one of the challenges that they encounter is good accommodation. So if those accommodations are being created, certainly Gambians will patronize them by going there during their holidays or going there uh, during the weekend or, you know, making a group or a retreat from work to, to, to just experience what Gambia has to offer. You know, Gambia is not all about sunshine and beaches. It's, true. it's got much more to offer than these three products. But people need to explore it, especially Gambians, yeah. should take the leading role in this, to explore it and to understand that our visitors need to also have a go at these areas and to experience the hinterland, the culture of the people up there, and to see how people live and appreciate the, the average Gambians. Thank you very much, Mr. Njai. This will bring me to my last question, which regards ecotourism. How far and what exactly has been done when it comes to ecotourism in the Gambia, knowing the fact that the world is getting greener and people are more interested when it comes to ecotourism? How far has this department gone through? Um, I must say that uh, Gambia as a whole hasn't done a lot in this area. Um, if you look at the two main uh, properties here that are eco-friendly, eco-built, eco-atmosphere, uh, you're talking about the Sandali Lodge, you're talking about the Mandinaba Lodges as well, which are in Makasutu. Mm -hmm. These are typical eco-tourism 
uh, establishments, accommodation providers, that everything they do, it's within the community itself. Ownership is between the community and the investors. Um, the m building materials, the local materials, most of the structures are from the within the community. Um, it is mainly run by the communities, managed by the communities, and on a shared basis by the communities. So these are direct interpretation of, you know, community benefits. And this is why government needs to encourage more and more people to invest in ecotourism. Um, yes, it has also its um, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, one of the challenges is, of course, um, to create an environment to start with. Because when you talk about ecotourism, it has to be on a large scale where you would have now either a river, bushes of natural environment where it will not be destroyed, but people will now need to build around it. Um, it is something that is of a demand from the tour operators now, and I would encourage government and us within the stakeholders to invest and diversify this product of sun, sea, and sand. Uh, if you look at the people that are also uh, uh, that use these facilities, these are people that are very eco-minded. They are very uh, atmospheric-minded. That um, they don't destroy the environment. They don't destroy the nature. They love the nature. They make good use of the nature, but they don't destroy it. And they are promoting that um, you know we, we we plant trees. We we keep less carbon uh, 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 emissions in our environment. And everything they do there is eco friendly. friendly. Yeah. So obviously, I am sure that within the next couple of years, you will see a few of the ecologists coming up. But it is certainly one that is needed to complement our already existing uh, products that we have. Thank you very much, Ms. Bunamanjai, the chairman of the Gambia Hotel Association. This brings us to this beautiful interview, more very interesting interview. Um, hopefully next time, sometime next year, you will invite us to again to come to the Gambia with all the stakeholders and of course all the sponsors to come and promote Gambia, not destination Gambia, mind the gap, but Gambia tourism sector in the most aggressive way we can possibly and to promote Gambia to the world. And um, it's a pleasure talking to you, Mr. Njai. And I know you are a very busy man, sorry for taking your time. <laughs> and, 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 uh, um, but we really appreciate your time. Um, on behalf of myself, the presenter of the Jell-Up Show from Interface Gambit TV, and of course the viewers and of course the chairman of Interface Gambit TV, we thank you very much. And we'd like to thank all the sponsors that sponsored this um, trip to come to the Gambia, Gambia Hotel Association, Senegambia Beach Hotel, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, Young's Dabo, Jamil Travoli, Northern Security Guard, Yaya Instant Money Services, and TJ Health International. Thank you very much, Mr. Njai. It was a pleasure yeah, talking to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Jerry Jeff Mboka, the New Zealand Face Interface Gambia, my lesson presenter, Lamin Jame. Nekalem Fitch Gambia, new pool promote Gambia, Musun Rio, Duko Yobu Chikanam, and the Sene Gambia Beach Hotel. And the hotel association be under say GCCI, under say Northern Garden Security, under say Young's Dabo, under say Jamil Trawale, under say Yaya Money Services, under say TJ Health International, Newland was Jering and Jeff Nugi Fiji Gambia, the promote Gambia, Sinin Comuna de Fesi, and Amungina Rafete, Aslam Alekum Badung Latolum Memol Gibeka Interface Gambia TV, until my present alarm in Jam and Filale Jang Gambia, and not a low interview of Menje, and Miss Anjalia, sort of Miss Anjalia, Atelemo. Chairman of the Gambia Hotel Association OT, Alo Kuma Kangon Memo Kuma Kay Nimal Mangaya for Angela Kanto, while in the parallel Purka Gambe Dingol Makoi, Doko Fan and Hotel Indus in Nimba, provide can put Gambe Dingol, Gambe Dingol, so Doko Menkeno Melanco, is a from Makoino, and your family, Alabaraka, and your interview, Jamal Lasodalanak, Bitan in Bantalabar, Inshallah, and Mitad Ladoto. But if you just, uh, cameraman, if you just take your camera, just want to have a quick word with this um, beautiful lady just sitting next on my left here. Uh, they're here in the Gambia to, to enjoy this beautiful sun side of this country called the smiling coast of the gambia over here i've got these two beautiful ladies uh, of just um hello madam how are you hi fine thank you uh, madam, if i may ask you what's your name julia julia where are you from uh nottingham 
Julia Nottingham, which is in the UK, for the benefit of the Vils. Julia, is this your first time coming to the game? Uh, no, actually, it's the second. Second, second time, so a repeat visitor. Julia, what is so excited about the game that you've been here the second time? Well, obviously, I love the beaches. <laughs> because <laughs> yeah, we don't have a lot of beaches in the UK. Right? Well, n no, not with the weather that you get here. That's and right. um, I actually like the environment that's here. Okay. Um, it's friendly. It's, um, I like to enjoy the different foods. Um, go and have a look round of what there is here in Gambia. What food have you tried yet? What Gambian dish have you tried? Yet? Oh, definitely chicken yasa. Chicken yasa. <laughs> when I get back to London, I'll cook ch chicken yasa for Juliet and I'll post it to Nottingham. <laughs> is that okay for you? That's Right, Juliet, um, how is the hotel services you received? Uh, very good, actually, very good. Brilliant. And uh, yeah, really enjoyed it. And um, the staff really can't do enough for you. We're not pestered really in any way. Uh, just here to relax. Yeah. Lovely. I'll just come cross over there to just speak to your friend. Hello there, madam. How are you? Hi, I'm fine, thank you. And what's your name? Safia. Safia, are you also from Nottingham? Uh, yes. Brilliant. Safia, first or second time visiting the Gambia? I've been coming to the Gambia for. Well, since 2005. More than me, that's fine. I'm a Gambian, but still she come to the Gambia more than me, that's fine. Yeah. Right, tell me something. What exactly did you enjoy about the Gambia? I love the culture, the environment. Um, I love the fact that no matter where I travel to, I like to be independent and to wander around, get out of the hotel, see things. There are many destinations now that you can't feel that you can do that in, but Gambia's not one of them. You can walk out the hotel, you can walk up and down. Yeah, people talk to you, but you're, it's non-threatening. It's Everybody just wants to be sociable, and it's, it's, it's a really safe place. Thank you very much. Such an honest word. This is the reason why this beautiful country is called the Smiling Coast of Africa. Ladies, I wouldn't uh, want to keep you too much. Enjoy your holiday and enjoy the rest of the day as well. I'm your presenter, I'm in Jamie on Interface Gambia TV. We're here in Senegambia Gambia Beach Hotel with the special tour, Destination Mind the Gap with Difference. I would like to give a big thanks out to all my sponsors, Senegambia Beach Hotel, Gambia Hotel Association, Young's Dabo, GCCI, Gambia Chamber of Commerce and Industry, of course, Yaya Monisev, Services, Northern Garden Security and TJ Health International. We still got more interviews to do. Stay tuned and watch out. Gambia Chikoshi Kanamrek. Send call on your Boom. A land of friendship and peace. Gambia has it all and more. So go discover the smiling coast of Africa. Your presenter, Mr. Lam Jamme, the Jollof Show. Hey, yo, 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 you already know me, man. FATA slash El Presidente. My name is John Dr. Daji, inshallah. Wednesday. Ben TV Lalo, okay? The channel 175, 10.30 p.m. You know, for next Max, my brother. Hey. You know, come in and go ahead, okay? It's gonna be live happening here on Interface Gambia TV. I'm your present to Lyman Jamie on a special show called The Jell Show. Watch out for this man here, El Presidente. Next week, Wednesday, 175 on the Sky Channel Box. Don't miss it, it's a crazy one. Yo! Miss, how are you? Yo! Dig it, dig it, dig it. No, I'm not digging it, dig it. Dig it, dig it. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Dig it, dig it, dig it. Hi, man. But you know, Dylan was here to meet Dylan Sweaty Happy New Year as well. After the next, we will have a new Inshallah, you know. Get ready for it. Yeah, absolutely. A very special Happy New Year from myself and, of course, El Presidente and the whole of the Interface Gambi team. And, of course, the job show with my manager. I know he's out there watching me, Mr. Mosa and Gary. We salute you, sir. A very special Happy New Year. Bon année, Dylan Yano. Jamu Yen Yepo Handi Nisset and Fisi Interface Gambi TV. Jako Tay. 19. Yo. Fog Rai Ju. Coach. No, coach, not. For la force de. Send call on you, dog. And yeah, you know we got the best rhythm. We got that feeling in your chest rhythm. Hey rhythm, dolly music, the good boy rhythm. And yeah, you know we got the best rhythm. We got that feeling in your chest rhythm. 